Is that me? Real. What is going on right now? My name is Zachary McNaughton, and I am not a professional angler. I've been fishing for over 20 years, and the one thing that these years have taught me most is that I have a lot to learn. So let's meet some of Vermont's true master anglers, and together we'll discover some fishing techniques and explore the many species that this great state has to offer. Today we're out at uh, Falls Park in Virgens. This is a great place to catch carp. We, you can see them out, maybe you can see them out behind me, but uh, we catch carp here pretty frequently. And the best time is usually from about mid-June to the end of August, sometimes even to the middle to even end of September, depending on the water temperatures. Carp in Vermont are really located in Lake Champlain and some of its tributaries up to a certain point. Um, so we've got carp also in on the Connecticut River drainage. And uh, if we're looking for carp, I find that if we fish the lower tributaries of Lake Champlain, that seems to produce more fish for me. So Dead Creek, Otter Creek, um, Hospital Creek, and a couple other little tributaries to, to Lake Champlain seems to work really well. One of the reasons I like to target carp uh, are because for the size and the number of fish that we have, at least in Lake Champlain and Otter Creek and Dead Creek, where I like to target them, um, you can consistently catch a really huge, powerful fish that's just it, it fights like nothing else. We've had fish completely spool a rod before we could even get to the rod to pull it up and set the hook. We've had fish break uh, like a medium weight bass rod right in half. They fight with a lot of fierce energy and even right up at the shore. Sometimes you'll hook them out far and they really don't start fighting until they're, you know, 20 to 30 feet from shore. And then, then that's where you get your biggest fight, is right as you're about to try to land it. So the carp that we're targeting are common carp, and uh, they're sort of a relative of a goldfish, essentially. And these are fish that came here from Europe with uh, set American settlers as they were coming across the ocean. They were carrying carp as a food source. Uh, and then they release them around here and we have them, like I said, in Lake Champlain. We have them in some of the tributaries to Lake Champlain and the Connecticut River. These are fish that naturalize themselves to our area over, over time. And we have a very robust population of them. And so we can catch them pretty easily. Oh, no! no! <laughs> A lot of people look at carp and don't think that they're very good because they're bony and generally not a fish that's targeted for a food source. Um, but the whole reason we have them here is because somewhere people would eat these pretty regularly. They put up one of the best fights that, I've, that I get. And I mean, I think today we caught well over 10 fish uh, that were 30 inches or better. So um, it's hard to do that with any other species on Lake Champlain. We're using a feeder rig, uh, and this is essentially a little cage. They come in a variety of different styles. This is one of the more inexpensive available on Amazon. This is basically uh, a way to hold the bait. Then we run a short leader. That, that's going to slip up above a barrel swivel. I've got a snap swivel here um, just so that I can change out my, my leader if I need to. When I'm using circle hooks, I, I use a size one or smaller. Ideally, um, the smaller the hook, the less corn you have to put on that. With the hair rig hooks that I've got, I'm using a size six or a size eight hook. Um, this, uh, circle hook is a size one but if it were if I could get 
more frequently if I could get smaller circle hooks, like a size four, that would be ideal, I think, for fishing out here. There are many different recipes for pack bait. For this episode, I'll show you two that we know work. Dan's mix is a very simple mix. The benefits are there are less ingredients, and it probably is a lot cheaper than mine. The oatmeal in my mix coagulates and sticks a little bit better to the feeder rig. While we mix our bait mixture, um, we're gonna see that we've got our panko crumbs, our jello mix, and our corn. I've only got one can of corn in there so far, so I'm gonna dump the second one in. Tap it in, make sure we get all the corn out of it. That's good. Um, now we're gonna just take and mix it with our hand. We're going to pick it up, squeeze it in our hand, um, and see if it crumbles real easy. So I'm just gonna add just a tiny amount of corn liquid. There, that's probably good. I don't need much. That, I can feel a significant change in texture. So now when I squeeze that together, it's almost like a, a, a doughy um, consistency. You want it to be able to form so that you can form uh, a ball essentially. Um, and then we're gonna take that and we're gonna squeeze that right into uh, this carp rig. That I have that bait there, I'm gonna take and put uh, several kernels of corn um, on my hook just to fill it up and cover it up. The nice thing about using the circle hook is that it generally gets them right on the lip and they don't get it too far back. I also find that carp, as a rule of thumb, don't bite too far back. So that's about as much as I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna leave the hook, the tip of the hook exposed and just cover the shank of the hook as much as I can. Um, and that's it. Here we've got the rig and we've got the uh, baited hook and we can now take that and cast it out. We're gonna, it, we can cast this pretty hard because with this style of uh, feeder rig, it doesn't, it doesn't come off that easily. Um, but there are some other types of feeder rigs that you can purchase on Amazon or anywhere else online that sells uh, carped fishing tackle. And then that just sits right on the bottom. Where we are here, there's enough of a current that uh, in theory, when this stops, it kind of creates um, a scent trail and then that, that hook with the corn on it is in that scent trail. So as the carp come up, they feed on that hook and when they feel the hook, they take off. We're targeting fish that average around 10 to 15 pounds. Uh, here at least, we, I would say the average fish is between 24 and 30 inches. Um, and so we're getting some pretty big fish. And so it's important that we're using tackle that can handle that. When I started, uh, I was using more conventional lighter tackle and we've had instances where carp would snap a medium weight bass rod right in half. Um, and so it's important to get something to gear up a little bigger than what you would typically use on Lake Champlain. So here uh, I have just a, um, a nine foot surf rod, uh, which I use for fishing the ocean. So if you guys already have that, that's a good way to start. Um, and I would suggest at least 20 pound test line uh, so that you can pull the carp in through the weeds. Here we've got a lot of grass and a lot of milfoil out there. So as the, as the fish get in close, uh, the line does wrap up in, that, in those weeds quite a bit. And the carp just swim through it like, like it's not even there. I have my rods geared up with actually with 50 pound braid uh, because oftentimes out here it's so rocky that these little uh, cage rigs will hang up on the rocks and rather than losing them at $2 a piece, it's a lot nicer to just pull them right out of that. And they do get mangled up over time. And so I, I am probably a little oversized for what's necessary, um, but it, it helps save on the, the tackle loss. Um, so it's really important to have tackle that we can pull those fish right through that vegetation. So when I am targeting carp, I use a couple different types of reels uh, just because I didn't wanna go out and buy all new tackle just to go after a fish that I wanna catch every once in a while. So 
I use a combination of surf fishing gear um, with, and this particular reel has a, a bait feeder switch. Uh, I also have just a trolling rod that allows me to, uh, I can cast this, not as well as I can cast the spinning rod, but I can still get it out there. This allows the reel to free spool. Um, regardless of what rod and reel combo that I'm using, I use these bait alarms because we might spread these out over a, a little bit of a distance so that we can pick up more fish. Um, and when we do that, with the reels free spooling, we want to be able to uh, be alerted to a bite. Well, I'll be done. <laughs> when I use my bait feeder reel, you can see here that this is the bait feeder position. When I get a bite, the line is just gonna free spool right off of that. With a little bit of tension, we can adjust uh, that line coming off of that with the, the bottom drag. Um, and then as soon as we get a bite, uh, that's gonna continue spooling off. We're gonna just start reeling it in that you see that switch switches over. And then that allows us to now, we've got a lot more resistance. Um, I can't grip that there. Um, a lot more resistance to that to that reel. And so this allows us to fight that fish pretty effectively um, without having to tighten the drag down between um, picking the rod up and, and reeling that fish in. So when this is free spooling, we're gonna have that set right down into this bait alarm, which you're gonna see, we get that line right in there and it doesn't take much to um, cause that, that uh, alarm to go off. So if I just pull a little bit, um, you can see that that starts going off. So if I'm sitting in my chair on the bank, I can look. Uh, these bait alarms are great because not only do, are they loud and obnoxious, uh, you can key in on them really quick, but they, they also light up. And so we can see on all of our different rods, we can, we can tell which rod uh, has the bite. That's a one-toner. <laughs> Oftentimes, it's not hard to distinguish just from a quick glance because the rod is usually bent right over and that spool is just spinning really, really fast. When I'm fishing with these bait alarms, one of the things that I like to do is um, put a little tension on the line so that it will uh, keep tension on the, on the reel so that when the fish bites, it, it sounds this alarm. And so when I get this set up, I'm gonna pull a little line out of the reel and I can just, I can just grab a, even a, a stick right from the bank and I'm just gonna lean this on the, on the line and that gives it enough tension so that it's not gonna hinder a bite, um, but it'll give me a, a nice uh, loud alarm as soon as that fish starts to bite. What the? Fisher, is it your turn or mine? As soon as he comes out of those weeds, we gotta reel like crazy. Ready? Set. Now. Reel, 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 reel. Okay, ready? Lift. And reel. It's back to the camera. All right. Nice catch, Fisher. That's a monster. Now, 
now, now, now, now. Run, 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 run. Another beautiful common. Nah, I'm gonna get him right back. There he goes. Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.